right, excellent guys, let's get into it. Now we're gonna do a recap of what we did in the lesson before, or the lesson that you guys um, did with teacher Kat on Monday. All right, so we were looking at exponents. So we're gonna do a quick recap of exponents, right? Now, in order for us to ever work with exponents, when we have, especially when you have variables in the exponent, the one thing that we always, always need is to make sure that our bases are the same. We need the same base every single time. All right, so if I know that three is a prime number, there's a good chance that all the other numbers also need to be put as three raised to the power of something. Now, if you guys have those new fancy calculators, I really love these new calculators. They're so nice and fancy. You know that white Casio one? It's my favorite thing in the whole world. If anybody ever steals mine, I think I'm gonna cry or if it ever breaks. It's my best friend. So if you guys have one of those and you're not 100% sure how to change 27, by the way, how do we change 27 so that it has a base of three? I'm just asking in case you guys don't know. Anybody? Let's see if anybody does know. How do I change 27 to make sure that it has a base of three and an exponent of something? Anyone? That's it, Nkanta. Hello, Nkanta. Excellent, that's it. Ivana, I was about to say that. I was literally about to say that. That's why I mentioned the calculator. If you ever come to a situation where you don't know, you're gonna pick up your calculator and you're going to type in 27 equals, and then you're gonna click the shift button. And then you're gonna look for a button. I think it's this button. I'm not 100% sure I need to check. Where's my calculator? Yeah, Lele, teacher Coco is busy telling people to have their calculator ready. She doesn't have hers ready. Let me see. Okay. Right. All right. So the button actually looks like this. It's got a dot and three commas like that. Right. And right above that button in yellow, has it has fact written on it like that. So if you, if you type into your calculator, 27, click the equals button. So click 27. Click the equals button, then click the shift button, and then click this button for fact. Your calculator is going to automatically do this. Three to the power three. Your calculator will do it for you. All right. And Ivana, you're already ahead of the game because some people didn't know that. Okay. Um, Tinsuelo, term three. Okay. We just want to keep up. All right. All right, excellent. So now we know that 27 can be written as three to the power of three. So what we're gonna do is now we've got three to the power of two X multiplied by three to the power of three. And this whole thing is to the power of X minus one. Right, over, how else can I express nine guys? How can I express nine? Remember I needed to have a base of three. So we're going to rewrite nine as, that's it, sure. And kind of like you're on fire today. Good. Three to the power of two. But all of this was already to the power of 2x plus two. Right. So the last thing I'm going to have to do here before I can compare anything is I'm going to distribute each of these numbers into the brackets that we've got over here. So I'm going to end up with three to the power of 2x multiplied by three to the power of 3x minus three over three to the power of 4x plus 4. All right. No worries, Caleb. It's awesome to see you again. 4x plus 4. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to note at the top that my like bases are being multiplied. And if they're being multiplied, we're going to keep the base and we're going to add exponents. Okay, so we're going to take 2x plus 3x minus three, right? And we know that at the bottom, we are dividing, we are dividing. Therefore, we're going to minus exponents. So we're gonna go minus, put this in brackets, guys, four x plus four. All right, and then we can just clean this up. I need you guys to clean this up for me. Tell me exactly what it is that we're gonna get. Okay, I know that this minus will be multiplied in here. So I'm gonna end up with three to the power of two x plus three x will give me 5x, minus 3, minus 4x, 
minus four. All right, so my final answer should read three to the power of five X minus four X is one X and negative three minus four is minus seven. All right, give me a thumbs up if everything I've just done looks familiar. Have we seen this before? Do we understand how to do it? Okay, have we done it before? There's someone here today called, and I'm totally going on, on a tangent here. There's someone here called the Antwort, which literally means the answer in Afrikaans, but that's not the point. The point is the Antwort is a very, very well-known South African rock band. So unless, unless we have celebrities, you know, grown men who are celebrities in our chat learning maths today, the Antwort needs to reveal themselves. <laughs> okay. Okay, Paige says, ma'am, why do you put the exponents from the bottom to the top? Okay, so we can take it a step at a time. Okay, Paige, we can take it a step at a time. So what we can do is, remember at the top they're being multiplied. So we can start by adding these exponents first. Okay. We can start by adding these first. Now, if I add like terms over here, I'm gonna end up with five X minus three, All right? So I was going to end up, my answer would end up like this. Let me write it on this side. I would end up with three to the power of five X minus three divided by three to the power of four X plus four. Now, my next question guys is, what is happening to these like bases? What is happening? They are being what? What are we doing? What does that line in the middle mean? But they're not being canceled out. Good, Isabel, that's it. They're being divided, right? And when we divide like bases, we need to subtract exponents. And the way we subtract is we always take the top minus the bottom. Now we're gonna keep our base. Our base is three. And then we're just gonna go three to the power of, and then we're gonna take whatever's on the top minus what we have on the bottom. And that's gonna be four X plus four, okay? But then that minus must go into both of them. All right, and that's how we end up over here. Okay, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, my sweetie, I need you to just stay behind with me. After the lesson, we'll go over one more, okay? In the meantime, everybody have a look at D over here. Give it a shot, pop your answer in the chat when you're done. Let me know what you guys got. Okay, Paige, just tell me if the explanation makes sense, uh, just so that we're not leaving you behind. Okay, just let me know. Excellent, excellent, my sweetie. Remember, don't shy away from asking any questions. If you have a question, go ahead and ask. Sorry, I was just talking to the house manager. Okay, all right. Um, I am, yes. The Antwort, who are you? <laughs> the Antwort is like, Coco, you're on mute. Yes, sorry, I was talking to the house manager. Yes. All right, guys. Let's have a look at this last question over here on the side before we get started on trig, because that's actually what we're going to be doing today. All right, so I know that these two things, A and A over here, are being multiplied and their bases are the same. So I'm going to keep my base A and I'm going to add my exponents. So this becomes A to the power of five. And then after that, I've got B and B. I'm gonna take the hand in just a second, right? And that's gonna be B to the power of eight. Ooh, not eight. Ooh, let me not lie to you guys. B to the power of seven. Three plus four is seven divided by, now remember if we have a bracket, 
and an exponent, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that bracket in, right? So this is going to end up being a to the power of six and b to the power of six, right? Now my like bases are being divided. So I'm going to keep my base a and I'm going to minus my exponents. Now remember guys, I minus top, it's always top minus bottom. So five minus six, I'm gonna end up with a to the power of negative one multiplied by, and then we're gonna look at b, B is going to be seven minus six, that's to the power of one. But I can't leave this thing with a negative exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this whole thing as a fraction and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to take it to the bottom so that it ends up with a positive exponent. So what I'm going to end up with is B to the power of one or just B over A to the power of one, which is just A. All right, give me a thumbs up if you got the right answer, guys. Let me know. Is everybody okay with what's happened here? Dinswalo, we are doing D and we've literally just finished D. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if you're still having a bit of problem, a, a bit of trouble, we'll come back to it after. All right, we'll come back to it. All right, excellent. Then we're only going to look at one of these that have a plus or a minus in the middle. Now, when we see one of these things with the exponents in the top, guys, and we notice that there's a minus in the middle, a plus or a minus. Okay, Lisa says, ma'am, why are we multiplying A and B? Because they were already multiplied to each other. Okay, remember, Lisa, A times B is the same as AB. Just because they're sitting next to each other doesn't mean we haven't multiplied them, we have. Okay, when they write A, B, they're telling us that they've already multiplied them to each other. Okay, but in this case, when we're taking A and A and we're comparing it, and we're taking B and B and comparing it because they have the same base. Okay, it's the same base. Excellent. All right. In this kind of question, guys, where we have a plus in the, and a minus in the middle, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to split and factorize. That's what we're going to do. We're going to split and factorize. Now, what do I mean by split and factorize? We're going to take this thing over here as 35A, and we're going to split it into, now, have a look, guys. There's a 5 over here. And there's a seven over here. So does anybody know how are we going to split 35? What do you guys think? How can we split 35 in a way that's going to help us? Anybody? How can we split 35? Just bear in mind, good Isabel. There's a five and there's a seven somewhere else. So we want 35 to be split in a way that we could possibly work with it. So we're going to split 35 into five times seven. And both of these things are to the power of A. Minus three times five to the power of A. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to recognize that five has a power of one. Seven also has a power of one. And I'm going to distribute. So this then becomes five to the power of A times seven to the power of A. Right. Okay, give me a thumbs up if what I've just done makes sense. Does everybody understand why I've distributed the A in? Give me a thumbs up. Excellent, good stuff. Good, so I'm gonna remove that A on the outside. I'm gonna do this, okay? And at the bottom, all right. We're going to do something at the bottom as well. Okay, two to the power of two A times seven to the power of A minus three to the power, three times two to the power of two A. Now, I want you guys to look at something very quickly. Okay, uh, if I had two to the power of A times three to the power of A, because they both have an exponent of A, I can rewrite this as six to the power of A because they both have the same exponent. Now, I can do the opposite as well, okay? If I have 10 to the power of A, 
I can then rewrite that as five to the power of A times two to the power of A. They both have the same exponent, okay? Does that make sense? As long as they share an exponent, I can then multiply them, okay? Got it? All right, I hope that makes sense. Okay, excellent. Awesome. All right, guys. So I'm going to ask you guys a simple question. If I gave you guys 2x squared minus x, and I said factorize, what would you take out as a common factor? What would we take out as a common factor there? Good, Chifaro, that's it, Isabel. Isabel, you're on fire today. Just like mm, 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 with the answers. Excellent. Yes, Amy, good, Nicole. We would take x out as a common factor, right? And we'd have 2x minus 1 left. All right, that isn't a trick question. I just want to know if you guys know how to factorize, and you do. You guys passed. You passed. Okay, now let's look over here on the top, guys. Look at the denominator. What do we have as a common factor? What do we have as a common factor on the top? In my numerator, Caleb, have a look again. It's something to the power of something. Have a look over here, guys. Remember, there's a minus in between. What do we see that's common over here? It's not just the A, guys. That's it, Nkechi. That's it, Nicole. Good, Anotita, be very careful. That's it, Caleb. The thing that's, that's common is not the seven to the power of A, it's five to the power of A. So we're gonna take five to the power of A out as a common factor. Hi, Kahalelo. Good, so we're gonna take five to the power of A out. And if we take that out, we're gonna have seven to the power of A minus three left, right? Over, now I want you guys to look at the bottom. Let's look at the bottom, guys. What do I have in common on the bottom? Good, Isabel, I didn't even finish my question. I mean, dude, you could give me some time to finish my question. <laughs> Good, two to the power of two A is common. Now, if I take two to the power of two A out, I'm going to have seven to the power of A minus three left. Now, I notice that seven to the power of a minus three is common. So I can then cancel, cancel. We cancel what's common. So my final answer should be five to the power of a divided by two to the power of two a. That's your final answer, guys. We can't say, ma'am, can we then cancel the a's? No. Are the bases the same, guys? Are five and two the same base? No, they are not. Nicole, you are spot on. Caleb, you're spot on. The bases are not the same. So we cannot cancel exponents. We can't minus exponents. We cannot do that. The only time we can do that is if my bases are the same. All right. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are we with exponents? Because I'm telling you guys now, they're gonna come back in grade 11 and in grade 12 to haunt you. If you're already having issues with them, in grade 11 and 12, they're gonna come back to find you and you must be ready for them. It's okay, Ukuke. You know what? It's great that you're bringing this up now so that we can at least, you know, we know that we still have a lot of practice to do. Okay, half the time, guys, it's not even understanding the work. It's just practicing it and getting used to the pattern of it. That's all exponents is. There's no way to trick you in exponents. It's not like factorizing or graphs where things get moved around. No, 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 no. In exponents, you're doing the same thing again and again and again and again. So you just need to get used to them. All right. Okay, thanks guys. I'm seeing your scores and tonight's quiz is really gonna help you guys take your time. And remember guys, we have a new friend. Did you guys remember that we have a new friend? at Watobi, his name is the Watobi wizard. So if you're ever stuck, ne, if you're stuck on a question and you're having a hard time, call on the Watobi wizard, call him. I don't even think that's how we call him, but you guys know what I mean. He's gonna come guys and he's gonna help you. 
like, he's going to help you guys. Just go on your WhatsApp. You're going to be like, hey, ma'am, this question. And you're going to, and then you're going to go to the Watobi wizard and he's going to help you figure it out. Sure. If that happens, if that happens, guys, please, please, please contact um, our other WhatsApp number. Okay. Please contact our other teacher now. Can we please just take screenshots of this and send to, to JC's just so you can see? Thank you guys. We really need you guys to tell us. Okay. Because that's how we're going to be able to make the, the app better. Now everybody's just like, ish, this what Toby was it. All right. We're going to speak to the development team. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. And can we have that person in our head during exams? Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. We're going to speak to the development team and they're going to make sure that they fix all the glitches. I'm very sorry, guys. But thank you for letting us know because now we know that there is something that we need to fix because we're trying to make the experience better for you guys. Okay. Some girl at least he blue ticked you. Some people only got a gray tick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right, guys. All right, Slay Queen, how are you doing? How are you doing, my sweetie? Um, I'm good, ma'am. How are you? Good, thank you. How's it going? I was just going to ask, um, are we factorizing exponents? We are done with factorizing exponents. We are moving on to, tri to trigonometry. Perfect. Perfect. So good to hear your voice. It's been a while. It's been a oh, while. Oh, a baddie is back in action. Where were you on Monday? I oh. was very, I had no voice. I had no voice. I was stressed. I was it's, stressed. I'm, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Don't stress. <laughs> sure, ma'am. Sorry. Could you please just like quickly just slide up into the trick section real quick? I just want to see if. We're just going to oh. do It's just normal. Revision. I was just focusing on angle beta and theta and alpha and so on and so on this is angle beta we're going to add an alpha and a, a theta in just a little bit okay yeah. I to go it's not going to gonna see. be bad it's not going to be bad yeah. it's going to be very easy okay Ooh. thanks ma'am all right my sweetie we'll be okay we'll be okay the slay queen is in the house to, to, to motivate us guys Yes, Chifaro, you can get the number on the website. Or Teacher Nelly can put it in the chat for you. There it is, guys. Please make sure you copy it. This is the only number. This is the only personal information we allow in the chat. Okay, no actual WhatsApp numbers, just this one. All right, guys, let's have a chat about trig. And before I start, because I'm already seeing tears, I'm already seeing tears. On a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are we with trig? Uh, <laughs> Teacher Nels, let's let's help Lichonola with uh, with um with Mike Mike settings. There we go. Warona says they haven't done it before. Okay, a uh, two yo 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 two fifty fifty five. Okay, fives and the nines. Yo 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 two nine five two yo bunte. How? Oh, give me say so. Is that a negative seven? How? Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. And you, <laughs> all right. I know, I know it seems scary, but guys, trig is the most fun. It is the most fun, especially when we understand what it is we are doing. K man, love to see it. I know, guys, negative seven. It's so fun. All right, guys, let's talk about, okay. <laughs> it's the beta symbol. It is. It is actually very easy. All right, let's talk about this, guys. So in trigonometry, and you'll even see on your calculator, guys, we have these three signs. Sign, cause, and ten. These three duties, right? They're on our calculator. And if you've done trig at school, your teacher's probably shown you some sort of, um, some sort of mnemonic device that ends up looking like this. So, ka, and toa, right? And we know that these soka toa things are actually us 
comparing angles and ratios together. We're taking angles and we're seeing how the ratios of certain sides make up a certain angle inside a right angled triangle. Guys, it must be a right angled triangle for now. When we get to grade 11, we'll switch it up just a little bit. You will, guys, when I tell you, Sokatoa, you will use it all the way to matric. It is there in your matric paper. It's very important that we understand Sokatoa. So I'm going to write this here. Sine, cos, and tan. Now, to show you guys how easy it is, just everybody needs to grab a calculator. We're gonna make sure that we have a calculator. And we're going to make sure that our calculator is in degrees. So if you've got your calculator with you, right at the top, that tiny little button there, right? The tiny little button that should be colored in there should be the little D for degrees. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Guys, you do know how, how deathly scared I was of borrowing people my anything? Okay. It's right at the top of your calculator, Mawande. It must have a D. The D must be there on the top of your calculator. If it's not there, teacher Nelly will help you figure it out. Click shift, shift, shift setup or shift mode and look for DEG. But if you're struggling, please just DM teacher Nelly or send teacher Nelly um, a, D, uh, a, a, a message in the chat. Yo, 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 score. Okay, send her a message in the chat and she'll be able to help you. And Ivana, we're gonna get there. Okay, we're gonna get to that in just a second. All right, I just want us to think, okay, good. That's it. Yes, DRG, that's the one. Click on degrees. Is it DRG or DGR? I'm worried now. Okay. Thank you, thank you, teacher Nels. All right, so what this actually means, guys, is if I've got an angle, this is actually an angle. This beta just means some angle. We don't actually know what the angle is, right? If we look at everything in relation to this angle beta, all the sides are named something in relation to my angle. Now, this side right next to my angle, is called my what, guys? What is it called? The side right next to it. Beautiful, Mawande, excellent. You're having calculator trouble and you're still able to answer my questions. Love it, good. This is the adjacent side. Okay, excellent. The side far, far away, the side all the way on the other side is called, good, the opposite side. This is the opposite side. And the one side, the longest side, the one always opposite my right angle to triangle is called my hypotenuse. Okay, excellent. All right, we're all on the same page. I'm glad that we're all understanding each other. So now here's what's, here's what's gonna happen, right? I'm going to say Sokatoa, and we know that this S over here should stand for sine. This C over here stands for cos. And this T over here stands for tan. Now, the other two things in this whole thing stand for either opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse, right? So if I say sine, we're going to write sine as opposite over hypotenuse. And for cos, I'm going to write this as adjacent over hypotenuse. And if I ask you guys for tan, you're gonna tell me it is opposite over adjacent. Give me a thumbs up if all of that makes sense. I'm sure most of you have already been through it. It's the easiest part. Excellent, awesome. Now, we need to remember two things. We need to remember two things. We need to remember whether they want from us. Do you want? Let me say, do I want an angle or do I want a ratio or a side? Okay. There's always a difference. Who can tell me the difference? What happens when we need to find an angle? Who remembers? When we need to find an angle, what do we need to do, guys? 
Anybody? That's it, Lisa. That's, we need to shift angle. Thank you very much. Shift, we shift angle. All right, that's why I call it a shift angle. I don't know why it's not trending yet, teacher Nelly. I mean, I put so much work into shift angle. It must start yeah. trending. It must it start trending. But <laughs> most of those students remembered it. Shift means it's trending you know, somewhere. I'm, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. All right, guys. Anytime they ask us for an angle, we click shift on our calculator. All right. We are always going to click shift. All right. Now, if we want a ratio, if we want a ratio or a side, our ratio or the side is always going to be something over something. Do not shift. That's it. No shift. The only time we click shift is when they ask for the angle. All right, let's kind of see if we can put this in practice, right? I'm not gonna give you an angle, guys. I'm not gonna give you an angle. Our angle is still gonna be beta, but this side over here is 12, this side is five, and this side is 13. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, what is the sign of tau? This is an easy one, because if my angle beta over here, this side close to it is my adjacent. That side over there is my opposite. And that side over there is my hypotenuse. And we can tell from the Sokatoa that sign needs to be opposite. What is the number at the opposite? It's going to be five over, remember page, hypotenuse. How much is the hypotenuse? That's it. The hypotenuse that we're looking for is 13. Good. Five over 13. Now, let's complicate life just a little bit because this is too easy. I feel like this is too easy. Now, let's say, for instance, now, I give you guys another angle, theta. There's my angle theta over there. And then I ask you guys for sine of theta. You need to now recognize, guys, that if I look at this in or the sides in relation to my angle theta, this side is now my what? What is this? It's no longer my opposite. What is it? This is 12. Sorry, sorry, Amy. Good. This is my adjacent. And this is my opposite. And that is always going to be the hypotenuse in this case. Now, if I asked you guys, what is the sign of theta? What would you say? Good, good. Nicole, not 12, not 2, 12. I get where you're going. Good. Isabel, remember, sign is opposite over hypotenuse. What is my opposite, guys? It's 12 over. What is my hypotenuse, Kajelelo? It is 13. My hypotenuse is still 13. All right. Now, here's my next two questions. What is tan of beta? And what is cos of beta? Any volunteers? Anybody? You guys can raise your hand, answer the question for me. Mawande, you can put your hand up for me. Love to see it. All right. But you can't just say, Chifara, you can't just say O over H. You need to tell me actually what it is. All right. Ukuteng, let's do the first one. What is tan of theta? Hi, ma'am. Hello, Ms. Sweetie. How are you doing? I'm great, ma'am. So we're doing the turn of theta, get ma'am? Yes. And the five is the adjacent, I guess. That's it. And the 12 is the opposite, and the 13 is the hypotenuse. Good. But we know tan is what over what? Tan is opposite over adjacent. Beautiful. What is my opposite side? It's 12 over five. Beautifully done. I don't even know. I don't even know why you're crying about trick because clearly you're very good at it. I don't know. I don't know why there are tears here. Some of them they feel. Like nah, 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 nah. I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Mawande, where are you? Mawande is just like run away. I thought you were going to answer this question for us. Nketi, do you want to tell me what is cause of beta? Yeah, but you run away. Another question coming. Yes, Nkechi. How are you doing, my sweetie? 
I'm all right, ma'am. Excellent. All right. Um, Do you want so, to talk about Sure. So, COS is um, adjacent of a hypotenuse, That's and it. the adjacent of beta is 12. That's it. And then the hypotenuse is 13, so it's 12 over 13. Beautifully done. Just like, mm. excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. Okay. <laughs> My one is like, I don't run away from maths, only geometry. <laughs> okay, good. All right, guys, give me a thumbs up if all of this stuff makes sense. Okay, I think it's the it's the basics that we should all be okay with at this point. Yes, Bundle. Hi, ma'am. How are you? What's up? Um, I wanna know like why all of a sudden when we do the sin the sin theta, why does it change? Um, the opposite isn't it supposed to be there by the five? Why does it change all of a sudden? Yes. Okay. So remember, Bunkle, we always need to look at which angle they've given us. Okay. Look over here. They've given us the angle theta. Correct. Yes. Now theta is over here. Do you see where theta is? Now, yeah. the angle that is opposite to theta, or the side that is opposite to theta, would be that one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not five. When we look at relate in relation to theta, this side isn't the opposite. This side is the adjacent. adjacent. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense yeah. now. Okay. okay. Thank you. No worries, Jonathan. Thanks, thanks, Bunte. No worries, Jonathan. Good luck. Okay. All right, excellent. Now we're going to step it up a notch because we are we are in grade 10, so we need to step it up. We're going to look at trig on the Cartesian plane. Okay. We're going to look at the trig on the Cartesian plane. Now, we all know the Cartesian plane. We do. Now, if I had to say here, guys, that I've got the value negative three and four, right? I know that from the origin to over there, I can draw a line. And what do we call this line that I just drew? Who remembers? <laughs> I'm sorry, Leah. That's it, Mawande, that's it, Chiparo. It's called the radius, okay? It's called the radius. Then what I can do from here is I can draw a straight line Nkechi, Nkechi, don't, don't judge me, ne? no judgment. Okay, I can draw a straight, guys, a straight line, and I can make this a right-angled triangle, right? And now I will notice that even though my angle theta is over there, I can still use this angle theta as a reference. Okay, I can still use that as a reference, guys. So I know that this is my X value. This is how far my X is from here to here. And from there to there, it tells me how high up it goes. So what is the X value, guys? What is the X value? Look at the coordinate I've given you. What is the X value? Good, it's negative three. And what would the Y then be? What would the Y then be on this side? Good, it's four. Now, if we've got this side and this side, are we able to find R? And we can see that R also looks like that. It's the hypotenuse, guys. Can we find R? I want you guys to calculate for R for me. Those of you who know, that's it, my one day I was about to ask, but you've already gotten there for me. We're going to use Pythag. We're going to use Pythagoras. Okay, so I want you guys to use Pythag and find me the answer. Nicole, you're cheating. I didn't even... Guys, I didn't even finish the question, and I mean, Pama, what's up, my sweetie? Sorry, ma'am. Um, in a separate scenario, if yes. they were to give us like, um, not an obtuse, but like an obtuse or like an acute tri, uh, obtuse. Oh my gosh, acute triangle. Um, would we have to construct it in order? Well, uh, would we have to construct it into like a right angle triangle? In order for us to you, always, you must always make sure that the line that you're drawing goes towards the x-axis. Okay, do you yeah. see how I didn't draw my point in that direction? Yeah. You don't draw it towards the y-axis, 
we always draw towards the x-axis, okay? Mm -hmm. So they will give you a point. They'll give you a coordinate. They'll say the point P, three, negative three and four lies on the Cartesian plane. And then they'll say, find the value of R. Facts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just go and you find the point, put it down, and then draw a straight line going down towards there. Now remember, Kama, that this over here is zero degrees, correct? Always, always. And this is 90 degrees. And this is. And then that one is 180. The bottom so, one is 270. Good, 270. And then you go all the way back around to 360, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if they say to us that our point that they've given us, let's say they've given us the point Q. Yeah. They say that the point Q is negative five and negative seven. Where will I draw it? Um, sorry. A negative, right? So it will be here. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes, yes I do, 100%. Negative. Now, do you notice that if I draw this all the way there, like that, look at the angle that this is making with zero degrees. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it will always depend on where, remember our zero is our x-axis and the angle that our point makes with the origin. Yes, ma'am. Okay, makes sense. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, excellent. Awesome sure. stuff. All right, Princess, do you have a question for me? Hello, ma'am. Hi, Miss Willie, what's up? Uh, ma'am, I wanted to ask, you said that when uh, drawing the line, when like completing it, you always draw the other line on the x-axis, right? Yes. What happens if you draw it on your uh, y-axis? Will you, okay. will the numbers <laughs> differ? Not that they'll differ, right? But the thing is, because it's sitting on the horizontal, I mean, on the vertical instead of the horizontal, you will continually have to either add 90 or minus 90, which is going to be annoying, especially when you forget, right? Because there's a 90 degrees. Like, let's say, for instance, our angle was sitting over here. If you decide to draw it over here, you now need to add whatever was over here plus that. That's going to make it more work for you. You're going to keep having to add minus 90. So the easier thing to do is just to take it where zero is. Okay, oh. which makes it much easier. Okay, that's why we always draw it towards the X. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Beautiful work. I love that question, by the way. It's a very valid question. We still have grade 11s who ask that question. It's a good question. Thank you, princess. All right, guys. So if you calculated properly, you would have used Pythag and you would have said R is equal to the square root of negative three all squared plus four all squared. Don't even play yourself. Put it into the calculator exactly the way you're looking at it. Your answer would have been five. Your answer would have been five. Therefore, our radius is equal to five. Then guys, they're gonna start asking you questions like this. They're now going to say, find the cause of theta. What is the cause of theta, guys? Look at it, what is the cause of theta? Look at my drawing. Here is my theta here in the middle. How would I then express the cause of theta? Remember, let me rewrite it over here. So, ka, toa. Remember, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent to our angle is always the one next door. So, cos of theta, instead of just being a number, like a, a three or a two or a seven, is going to be negative three over our r, which is five. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, what is the tan of theta. Find me the tan of theta, guys, using the drawing. Beautiful, Mawande. Excellent work. Excellent, Tiamo. That's it, Samano. Excellent, Oratilwe Palisa. Excellent. I want you guys, I don't want you guys to stay behind, eh? Come with me. Everybody give me an answer. Well done, Otuke. That's it. Good. It's four over negative three, because I know that tan is opposite over adjacent. There's my opposite, there's my adjacent. All right, give me a thumbs up if these things make sense. 
Pama, I can't, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna leave you. You must come with me. <laughs> Ma, one day don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> good and sine of theta would be four positive four over five beautiful beautiful guys excellent now let's look at this next question that i've got okay let's look at this next question that i've got look at what they have done for us guys they've said the point s ah caleb we just did this question relax Breathe, breathe, breathe. We just did it. Trust me. Okay. It says here, <laughs> the point S, which is negative three and negative four. We know that this is our X value and this is our Y value. Is a point on the Cartesian plane such that OS makes an angle of theta with the positive X axis. Remember guys, I'm going to take my point S. And where am I going to take this line up to? Where am I going to draw a line up to, guys? The X axis or the Y axis? I will, I can't draw towards the Y. That's it, to the X axis. Thank you, Tiamu. Good. So we're going to draw it this way right, like that, and we're going to treat our angle theta as this one here, this tiny little acute angle over here. When you're asking me, ma'am, why, when they've given you that long one, it makes sense in grade 11 when you guys do something called reductions, it's going to make sense. Okay, now this over here is my x value, so my x value will be negative three. And this over here will be my y value. So my y value will be negative four. Now, the question then says, calculate without using a calculator, the length of OS. What do we know OS as, guys? OS is good. You, my one day, excellent. Good, Tiamo. It's the, it's the radius or it's the hypotenuse. And we know how to calculate for the hypotenuse in a right angled triangle. Calculate for the hypotenuse for me, guys. Tell me, what is OS going to be equal to? In okay, you're cheating. I just gave you the same question. Just no, no, you're cheating. <laughs> Kiara, you're also cheating. I'm watching you guys. Okay, <laughs> very nicely done. So we can calculate for the length of OS. We're just going to say OS is equal to the square root of and we're going to take our x value, which is negative three all squared plus negative four all squared. And this is equal to the square root of negative three all squared is nine plus negative four all squared is 16. And this is equal to the square root of 25. And that is equal to five. So the length of OS is five then they want us to find without using a calculator, the value of sec theta. Where have we seen sec theta before, guys? What do we know about sec? Who is sec? Sec theta is the cousin of who? Good, he's a cousin. The cousin of? Good, the cousin of cause, of cause. Remember, if you're having trouble remembering whether it's cos or sine, Nicole, sec looks like cos written backwards. Okay, so it's the cousin of cos theta. Okay, the wizard of cos. <laughs> okay, good. So we know that sec theta can be written as one over cos of theta. All right. So we can rewrite sec theta. I'm gonna go sec theta is equal to one over cos of theta plus sine squared of theta. Now remember guys, when we see the squared over here, what we need to do is we need to find the ratio and then square it. Okay, so tell me guys, what is cos of theta? Let's start with cos of theta. What is cos of theta? Look at your drawing, guys. What is cos of theta?
Good. It's negative three over five. Beautiful. Negative three over five. Excellent. So now this whole thing wants one over cos of theta. That is sec. So we're going to rewrite sec as one over negative three over five. All of that plus, give me sine of theta, guys. What is sine of theta? Excellent, Amy. Negative four over five, but they said they want sine squared. So we need to find the square. Yes, princess, correct. So sec is five over negative three. Yes, because it's just the opposite. Right, so we would then rewrite this as five over negative three plus, and then we still need to find the, we still need to find the square of each of those, plus 16 over 25, right? So I then need you guys to add up these fractions. Find an LCD, right? and add up those fractions. And I think I've lost teacher Nelly. I'm just quickly gonna go get the, the link to tonight's quiz. All right, okay. Find the answer for me guys, and you can take it from there. All right. Okay, so here's the link to the quiz. Here's the link to tonight's quiz, everyone. Okay, that's as far as we're gonna get with trig, yes and catchy. Mawande, if your answer looks like that, they're gonna know you use the calculator. You need to use the normal way. Hi, Nkechi. Um, hi, ma'am. Ma'am, please explain the whole sec thing again. Okay, so um, cause, cause is adjacent over hypotenuse, yes? Yes. And because sec is the cousin of cause, sec is just going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Oh. Okay. okay, thank you. That's the only difference. All right. All right, guys, I've got to run. I'm going to pop the quick, uh, the quick, the link to the quiz quickly. Yes, the answer, don't ruin it. Yes, there's a lot of questions in the quiz today. Good stuff, guys. Well done. The answer is negative 77 over 75.